Hey everyone, Brr C here. Welcome to Super C. So today we're going to talk about two DAWs, Studio One, Bitwig. Personally, I've been using Studio One as my main DAW for about six years now. I've also been using Bitwig for the last eight months or so. Still need to make a decision as to where I'm going, so either Studio One or Bitwig. So I thought, you know what, let's do a little comparison video. Now as mentioned, of course, I don't have nearly as much experience with Bitwig as I do with Studio One. So if I say something about Bitwig or Studio One for that matter that you don't agree with, please let me know, leave a comment below. But I do believe that already I've kind of identified some of the main differences between the two. Now, by the way, when I say Studio One or Bitwig, I'm talking about Studio One Professional or Bitwig Studio. So the two flagship versions. Okay, let's get started. Now, the first thing to talk about, and yes, people want to know about this, it's the price. Now, if you purchase Studio One for the first time, it will cost you around 400 euros or $400, something like that. If you want to purchase Bitwig for the first time, it's going to be almost exactly the same, around 400 euros or dollars. However, if you want to stay up to date after that, that's where there is a difference. Now, Bitwig works with a kind of update plan. So when you purchase it for the first time, you will get one year of updates, which means that whenever Bitwig releases an update, you'll be eligible for that update. Now, after 12 months, you will either have to renew that update plan or you will stop receiving updates. You can still use uh, Bitwig, but you won't get any updates. So if you want to stay up to date, you will have to renew it on a yearly basis and it will cost you around 160, 170 euros or dollars. Now Studio One works a little bit different or at least how it's worked until now is like this. So whatever version of Studio One you purchase, you will get updates until the next major release. So take me for example, I purchased Studio One version three. Uh, so I got updates until the next major release, which of course was version four. So I got 3.1, 3.2, etc. They released version four. Um, then I had to upgrade to version four. Then I received updates for 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, etc. They released version 5, I had to upgrade again, and now I've been receiving updates. I think we're now at 5.5. Um, I'll probably uh, will still receive updates until the next major release, which is going to be version 6. Now, upgrading to the next version is around 148 euros, I believe. Should be almost the same in dollars. Uh, that already is a bit cheaper than the 160, 170 for Bitwig. On top of that, Presonus, of course, isn't releasing a new major update every year. Historically, they've been releasing uh, major updates every two to three years. So if you do the math, then Bitwig is quite a bit more expensive than Studio One. Now let's quickly talk compatibility. You can use Studio One on Windows and Mac. You can use Bitwig on Windows and Mac and Linux. The fact that you can use Bitwig on Linux, very nice touch. Okay, now let's take a look at the interfaces. Um, I have to say that, in my opinion at least, that the interface of Studio One seems a bit more um, polished or matured or lux luxurious. I'm not sure how to call it, but it's just the overall look and feel which is a bit more appealing to me than Bitwig's interface. Um, a bit difficult to explain, but let me just give you a few examples which might make it a bit clearer. Now let's first take a look at how side chaining works. So here we are in Bitwig. Um, by the way, this is the compressor. This is the Bitwig compressor. What I find remarkable is that there is no way to directly side chain the compressor. You know, I mean, if you talk about side chaining, the first thing you think about is compression, right? But there is no way to directly side chain this compressor. There is a way to side chain it, but you have to use some other methods. We'll get back to that in a minute. But there's no way to directly side chain this. I found that uh, a little bit funny. Um, anyway, to side chain, you would typically use this device over here. This is the Dynamics uh, device. Over here, this symbol that represents side chaining, you can select an input over here, and then here you can select either uh, pre or post fader. So that's how you do it. Um, by the way, it works exactly the same or almost exactly the same with third party plugins. So, for example, here we have an instance of Neutron. 
um, here we have that symbol again we can select it select an input over here and that's how you set up side chaining nothing wrong with it it's pretty easy to set up um, but now let's take a look at how it works in studio one okay so here we are in studio one um, if you look in the mixer here we have a bass track this is a drum track on the bass track we have a compressor let's open that up and use that as an example now on basically any plugin whether it's stock plugins or third-party plugins that has sidechaining capabilities you will see this button over here which is basically the same as that that sidechaining symbol in Bitwig it's just that it says sidechaining it's right there it's in your face so let's activate that and then here we can choose a source so okay let's choose the source drums which makes kind of makes sense right um, but before I click this, before I activate the drums, keep your eye on this area right here. So let's go. Boom. There it is. So what has happened is that Studio One has automatically created a send. And if you hover over it, you can see exactly what that send is all about. It is a sidechain. Uh, it, sent, it, it, it sends it to the bass track. So the bass track over here. It is insert number three, which is the compressor, and it is also called compressor. So you can see in one blink of an eye, you can see exactly what is going on. So it's pretty similar in many ways to how it works in Bitwig. It's just much clearer, you know? And on top of that, you can also create a uh, side chaining from right here. So here we have a guitar track. Let's say that we want to uh, side chain this with the bass or vice versa I'm not sure how to say that but okay here we are on the bass track let's add a send and we can choose from sidechain over here and okay let's target the sidechain guitar so the guitar track insert number three which is a compressor let's choose that now let's open the compressor and already you can see sidechaining has been activated and also the source is the bass track so you can also do it that way. So, you know, it's just a bit more uh, sophisticated, if you will, and it just makes it all a little bit clearer. Now, another little example would be, okay, how do you transpose a track? Now, in Studio One, that's super easy. You just go to the inspector, open it up, and there it is. It actually says transpose. So you can simply transpose up, transpose down. It's right there. You know, it's exactly where you'd expect it to be. Now, of course, you can also transpose stuff in Bitwig, you know, but you would have to use things like uh, that node transpose device over there or transpose map, which, by the way, in and of themselves are very, very useful tools to have potentially. But to just simply transpose a track up or down, unless I've missed something. And again, if I'm wrong, let me know. Leave a comment below. But as far as I know, it's not there. All right, let me mention one more example, and that's about advanced plugin routing. So here in Bitwig, we have a instrument track, and on that track, we have a reverb effect. Of course, we can add more effects. So let's, for example, add a delay. Okay, now again, of course, we can add more effects if we want to. The nice thing is that we can also have something called nested effect. So if we look at this reverb over here, if we press this button, this little blue plus is going to help me add a uh, nested effect. So let's uh, add a compressor, for example. Now we have a compressor over here. This compressor is now nested, which means that it will only affect what is coming from this reverb. And we can add more if we want to. So let's add an EQ, for example. And again, this EQ and this compressor are only affecting what is coming from this reverb. So that's pretty nice. Um, and of course, we can add nested effects to the delay as well. Um, let's add an EQ over here. And as you can imagine, this way we can build up a pretty advanced effects chain. Now here in Studio One, let's again take this uh, guitar track as an example as you can see we have three insert effects on this track so an EQ neutron and a compressor which you can also see represented in this window over here this is the window for the advanced routing options 
uh, again, you can see EQ, Neutron, and a compressor. Now, in Studio One, we do not have nested effects as such, but we do have splitters. Now, splitters are awesome. I mean, we can just grab a splitter and place it basically anywhere. Let's place one over here and boom. It now has split the signal in two. We can also split it in three, four or five if we want to. Um, this, by the way, is a normal split, which means that these are two equal uh, uh, copies. We can also split it by channel or by frequency. But now we can add more plugins. So for example, let's add another EQ and place it over here. Let's add another uh, compressor. Okay, and place it over here. We can now also add another splitter if we want to. So let's place another splitter over here. And as you can imagine, I mean, the possibilities are really endless. You know, and I'm, I have to say, I'm not even sure how much more options you get in terms of um, signal routing than Bitwig. But one thing is for sure, I mean, it's so much clearer. I mean, you only have to look at it once and you can see exactly what the signal is doing. I mean, over here it hits an EQ, then it hits a Neutron, then a Compressor, then it splits. And you, you, we can still drag stuff around, by the way, like this. Now, and that's what I mean when I say that I think that the interface of Studio One is just a bit more matured or developed than the interface of Bitwig or a bit more luxurious, you know, I'm, I'm still struggling to find the right word, but you know, it, it just makes it so user-friendly. It's, it, it's just such a breeze to use, you know, and that's exactly one of the reasons why I like Studio One so much. Now, one of the things that I really, really like about Bitwig, which is also one of their biggest selling points, and that is of course, the modulators. Now, what are modulators? Well, modulators modulate things. So for example, let's take a look at this uh, reverb over here. Now down here, we have this little symbol that shows the modulators. And if we click one of the pluses, you will see the options we have. So we have ADSR, uh, we have LFOs, you know, just tons of options. Let's choose one that most of us will be familiar with. Let's choose an LFO. Okay, so here we have the LFO, you can see it going. Uh, if we click here, we can, we can tweak it a little bit. But then if we click this, yeah, what is it kind of arrow thing, we can now modulate, we can now choose what to modulate with it. So let's choose this width knob, okay, and boom, that's it. So now we're modulating the width with this uh, LFO. That's how easy it is. Now, when I first heard about this, I have to say I wasn't really that impressed until I started using it and I quickly started to realize that it's it's such a powerful tool set to have that you know opens the door to so many possibilities. And that's also very typical of Bitwig is that if you really dive into it, you'll very soon discover that you know it will give you so many possibilities, so many options to do things in terms of tweaking, etc. And usually you will get several options to do what you need to do. So for example, let's go back to, um, to side chaining. So here we have that Bitwig compressor again. Just a few moments ago, I just said that it is actually impossible to directly side chain the compressor, the Bitwig compressor. And I thought that that was a bit funny, but it is correct. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, it is impossible to directly side chain the compressor. However, you know, again, Bitwig will give you so many possibilities that it's almost always going to be possible to still somehow do it. And one of the ways to do it is to use a modulator. So let's open the modulators. And over here we have a modulator called Audio Sidechain. That should give us kind of a clue that, you know, this modulator might help us. So over here, we can see that same side chaining symbol. So if we click that, we can choose an input. Uh, let's choose an input. And then over here, we can click this, again, this kind of arrow, and we can choose whatever we want to modulate. So that way you can still, uh, in a way, uh, side chain this compressor, you know? Anyway, you know, again, it, it gives you so many possibilities, and that's really one of the things that I really like about Bitwig. Now that also brings me to another great selling point of Bitwig, and that is of course the grid. Now what is the grid? 
the grid is basically a, a modular environment where you can actually build your own effects and build your own instruments. Now, I have to say that Studio One comes with some pretty decent synthesizers that you can tweak a lot, but yeah, nothing really like this, where you can actually build your own effects and build your own instruments. I have to say, not everyone is into that. You know, many people are, uh, many people like the, the convenience of presets and pre-made instruments, pre-made effects. But for anyone who's really into tweaking stuff and sound design and building your own instruments like that, Bitwig is definitely something to check out for you. Okay, let's go back to Studio One for a moment. Uh, one thing I also like about Studio One is that it is organized into pages. Now, first of all, whenever you open Studio One, this is what you'll see. This is the start page. Uh, from here, you can create new songs, new projects. You can see recent files. You can see a news feed, etc. Now, then we have the song page. Now, in the song page, of course, we can record, edit and mix our songs. Then we have something called the project page. Now the project page is something that I still haven't seen in any other DAW out there. Personally, I haven't seen it. Project page is basically an entire mastering suite built in to Studio One, which is awesome, of course. And then finally, we have the show page. Now the show page is really made for live performances. Uh, you can create an entire set list. Then you can bring in some backing tracks, either audio files or you can also bounce your own tracks that you've been working on in Studio One. Maybe you want to sing along and take out the, 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 the lead vocals. Maybe you also want to play some guitar along and take out the guitar track, then bounce that and it will automatically be placed in the show page. Now, uh, you can have different uh, effects changed per instrument and also per song. It will automatically change when the song changes. You know, it's really amazing stuff. And again, just like the project page, the show page is something that I personally haven't seen in any other DAW out there. But then there is a feature in Bitwig that I really, really hope that Presanus will also implement a version of in the next major update of Studio One. And that is live looping features, clip launching. I mean, that would be a perfect addition to the show page, if you ask me. And that, I think, in my opinion, is something that is really lacking in Studio One. Hopefully they will add it, um, but as it stands now, it's not there, or at least it's not there yet. Now, Bitwig, of course, does have live looping features, clip launching, um, and I think they've done a pretty good job at it. One of the things that I really like is that you can have the clip launcher and the normal arrange window side by side that can be really useful when creating songs. So, for example, you can experiment a little bit in the clip launcher. If you like what you hear, you can drag it over to the arrange window. I have to say that Studio One has a feature that does exactly that called the scratch pad. You can use that to experiment. If you like what you hear, you can drag it back into the main timeline. So Studio One isn't lacking in that area, but again, it doesn't have live looping features. On the other hand, Studio One has a feature that I'm actually pretty surprised about that Bitwig doesn't, or at least doesn't have something similar, as far as I know. Again, if I'm wrong, let me know. Now, this feature is called Patterns. Now, Patterns is basically a pretty advanced step sequencer. Now, of course, in Bitwig, we do have the normal piano roll editor. By the way, in Studio One, we also have a normal piano roll editor. This is really something different. So, Patterns with Patterns, Obviously, you can create a pattern, uh, you can loop it, you can also create different loop lengths for different instruments and thereby creating some really interesting uh, rhythmic effects. Uh, we also can have different variations of, uh, of patterns. We can use note repeats, we can use probability. You know, all in all, it's just a really, really awesome, uh, awesome feature. And again, you know, to be honest, I would have expected this in Bitwig sooner than in Studio One, but there you go. Now, of course, there are some more differences between these two DAWs, but I believe these might be some of the most important ones. So let's draw some kind of conclusion. Okay, first of all, Studio One. Now, Studio One, in my opinion, looks great, 
very intuitive, very user friendly. Uh, it makes a lot of sense, you know, everything is where it's supposed to be. Um, it's very clear, you know, you get a lot of good overview uh, of things. Um, it also comes with some, some really amazing unique features like the project page, show page, patterns, core track, things like that. You know, all in all, it's just an amazing all-purpose DAW that can be used by basically any type of musician. Now, no matter what musician you are, of course, you can also use Bitwig and you'll be fine. Uh, but Bitwig seems a little bit more tailored towards electronic musicians, especially those who are really into tweaking stuff sound designers, anyone who's into creating their own sounds and effects. Um, of course, the clip launcher that characterizes uh, Bitwig. Studio One does not have that. Um, with Bitwig, you also get a lot of options. It's really a great DAW for creative musicians in terms of tweaking sounds, tweaking effects. You know, so really, really great stuff. Now, in conclusion, I would say that yeah, both of these DAWs are amazing DAWs in their own right. You can't really go wrong either way. Now, I still have to make a decision for myself. So am I staying with Studio One or am I switching to Bitwig? That's a tough one. I'll probably be using them side by side for a while longer. Anyway, let me know what you think about it. What is your favorite DAW, Studio One or Bitwig or maybe another DAW entirely? Let me know, leave a comment below. For now, thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.